I'm Nicole Erickson, Environmental Services Coordinator for Crow Wing County, and the four tips that I have that you can do to protect our waters is first, leave the water at the lake. Drain all of the water from your boat, bait buckets, and your motor before leaving any water body. Second, clean up your rig. If there's any plants, mud, or debris on your boat and trailer, we will have you remove those before you leave the access for the day. Three, dry it out. If you're removing docks or lifts or swim rafts, it's recommended to dry those for 21 days. For boats, trailers, and other gear, it's a recommended day of five day drive time. And number four, spread the word, not the species. Unless it came from that water body, don't put it there. This includes anything from your aquarium. A friendly reminder is that it is illegal to transport with your drain plug. So when you approach access and you see an inspector, they might kindly remind you that it's illegal to transport. Even if you live on the lake or just a couple miles down the road, please leave your plug out during transportation. One of the more riskier boats are wakeboard boats. Anything with a ballast tank in your boat is considered risky for AIS spread in our lakes. Things that you can do to help is make sure that you clean off any plants, debris, or mud from your boats and trailers, and then drain all the water out of the compartments of the ballast tanks. Now, if you have soft tanks or hard tanks, this will be different. You can actually physically lift up your soft tanks and dump the water out of those bags, or you can just turn on your switch to make sure all the water is drained. Zebra mussels can actually survive more than a few days in just one cup of water. So that standing water in your ballast tank is why it's so risky. So make sure that after the day, you want to dry your boat for that five day recommend time and leave open your compartments. If you own a boat that takes in water into the ballast tanks, it is recommended that you go to a decontamination station or make sure that you clean it out at home using the proper protocols and procedures. In Crow Wing County, you can look up our local decontamination units by calling our hotline number, which is 218-824-1055, and that will give you local decontaminations in the area. If you're in search of a local decontamination in your area, look up that county and see if they have some portable sites located at the access and call that local AIS coordinator for more details. While performing your own inspection on your boat, make sure there's no attached AIS, no water in any of your compartments, and no aquatic plants on your boat or trailer. If you do have live bait, remember that once it goes out on the lake, it's considered lake water and it needs to either be dumped at the site or exchanged with clean, fresh water before leaving the lake. Another tip while performing your own inspection is to lower your motor down to the ground before entering and leaving the water body. If you own a jet ski, another tip is that if it's been in the water within the last couple of days, to turn on your motor and let it run for five to eight seconds. This would not harm your jet ski in the process and you would be surprised at how much water spews from the back of your jet ski. When you come to an access, you might notice a lot of different signs here. Well, do you actually pay attention and look at them? Well, at Crow Wing County, we have these special decontamination signs at 44 of our accesses that are highlighted in our Crow Wing County AIS prevention plan. So really, next time you're at access, take a few minutes to read the signs and get the information. It is there for you. 
Did you know that statewide, only 4% of our lakes are infested with zebra mussels? So let's remember to clean, drain, and dry. Hi, my name is Darren Welly. I am with the Morrison County AIS program. I am uh, born and raised in Little Falls and growing up around the area, we did a lot of fishing and recreation, tubing on the water. And, and that's part of the reason why I got into this you know, field is to make sure that the lakes are there to enjoy for you know, my family and the future families uh, to, you know, that come. So Minnesota is home to the land of 10,000 lakes. So what do we need to do to protect this for our future generations can have the same experiences that we're having today? So what we can do is we can clean, we can drain, we can dry all of our watercrafts so that we can have this for years to come. The simple things that we're doing right now, just pulling our plug off our boats, removing our weeds, these are simple things that we're doing that are helping prevent AIS. So thank you, Minnesota, you're doing the right thing. My name's Tim Terrell, I work for the Mississippi Headwaters Board, but I grew up in Kansas City, Kansas in an urban environment. I never really had these chances to really get out there and enjoy the resources like we do in Minnesota. I mean, the land of 10,000 lakes. What I've learned is we want to protect these lakes and not just so we can have clean, healthy environment, but that our kids can enjoy the very same thing that we enjoy today. A lot of us like to go out, we like to take our kayak, we like to put it on our car and go out with friends and go tubing or kayaking on the Mississippi River or lakes, streams, whatever it may be. The Mississippi Headwaters Board actually put up signage on different stretches of the river that tells you how many miles it is and how long it will take to get from one landing to another landing downstream. If you enjoy our lakes and rivers just like I do, and you like new and enjoyable experiences with your friends and family, why don't you visit our Mississippi Headwaters website to discover new opportunities. So what is resource-tainment? Well, it's community events where people gather and share experiences on the water. Visit our website to learn more about these events. AIS is all about community. It's about all of us working together for a common cause, whether that's protecting the resource or protecting the experiences that we all share together. Let's do our part and clean, drain, and dry. So when we think about AIS, we're always thinking about the boats. But what do we do with these things? Well, there's an easy way to self-decon. Just take your gear, throw it into the bathtub, and turn on the hot water for 10 minutes and you'll be ready for the next day for an enjoyable activity. When it comes to decontamination of gear, keep it simple. Just take it off, let it dry for five days and go out and enjoy the resources next week. So the newest, hottest invasive species in Minnesota right now is called Starry Stonewort. It's a bright green invasive microalgae that grows in a really aggressive way. So the unique feature about Starry Stonewort is that it has these bulb-like shapes. It look like star ball bulbs and that when it gets into the sediment actually grows the plant. And so you can start participating in our Starry Trek event, that which is statewide every August. And you can look up more information at www.starrytrek.org. The movement of Starry Stonewort has been primarily through watercrafts and at the local accesses. So that's why it's so important that we're checking our boats and trailers to make sure they're cleaned, drained, and dry. So when you start participating in our Starry Trek statewide event, you'll get a sampling rake and actually go to a public access and sample the lake. You want to target heavy vegetated areas. And so right now we see a lot of weeds, but not necessarily all weeds are bad. We have a great native vegetation population in Minnesota. So right here we have uh, invasive curly leaf pondweed that has a really sharp 
serrated edge, but we have a familiar look-alike called clasping leaf that clasps around the stem. And that is native throughout all of Minnesota and is a really good vegetation to have in our lakes. Now look at that sample. You might think, oh man, look at all that vegetation. But just by looking at it, it's all native vegetation and that is great to keep our water quality of our lakes. Crow Wing County is putting some more prevention efforts into our prevention plan this year and we're searching all 44 of our accesses in the summer to identify if we have any new invasive species in Crow Wing County. Zebra mussels don't only attach to your boats and trailers, but they also attach to our aquatic and vegetation. And so that's why it's really important that we take the weeds off. We're out here today looking at some starry stonewort that we harvested from uh, Big Turtle Lake. I'm going to point out some stuff to people and see what we can see and not get too deep into the biology of it or anything, but just point out some things that people will notice as they're maybe looking at some plants around their house or dock or anywhere else like that. One of the things that uh, happening in Belchami County is we're getting a little bit of a spread happening from one water body to the other. Starry stonewort has been found out that the uh, stonewort itself will dry out within like 15 minutes, but the bulb wheels will last almost all day. So it's very important to make sure you check your prop whenever you're in a starry stonewort water body and removing any bulb bills or intact starry stonewort from your watercraft. Because it doesn't take much to transport it and it doesn't take much for it to get off and then start a new colony of starry stonewort. So we want to make sure that we're cleaning our boats pretty good make sure that there's no vegetation and stuff on them that uh, could possibly be transported to another water body. So this is a cat litter box of starry stonewort <laughs> that we pulled out of Big Turtle Lake. First thing you're gonna notice is this right here, the little star-shaped ball, ball bill. No other um, vegetation in Minnesota has a star-shaped ball bill. So this little section here is a brack and it looks like it's two leaves coming out, which it's not. But this is shorter than that one. And that's the other characteristic that you can look for. If we take up a handful of this stuff and you squeeze it, oh, I can hear a little bit of popping. But See all the chlorophyll that comes out? Because I'm breaking the cells. I'm breaking the cell walls. So I'm getting all the fluids out from the cells and it's filled with chlorophyll. That's what makes it green. It also likes to stain clothing, so don't put it on your cloth. There, that's a destroyed, can you hear it kind of crunch? Because you don't see that in a lot of other stuff, just because the cells are so big in this stuff. So starry stonewort is a macro algae. So that means you can see it as opposed to a micro, which you wouldn't be able to see. So one cell is from that node to this node. So that's one cell of starry stonewort. See how it's nice and sturdy? Well, let's break that cell wall and see what happens. And it just goes limp because all the pressure in the cell wall is gone now. You can actually pull out the chlorophyll and it turns kind of clearish because that one cell is broken and now all we have is a cell wall after I've pulled everything out of it. Over in Moose Lake, we, uh, when we were doing the survey on it, we saw starry stonewort like six inches from the surface and we were getting bogged down in it because of our motor was getting, prop was getting tangled up. So I stuck a pole down through it and it was over 10 feet deep. Uh, but the starry storm was only like six inches from the surface. So it grows really deep. Uh, I know in literature, 
It has been documented to be 23 feet deep at one point, but that was over in Europe. I don't think it's been that deep in the United States that we know of. Most of our infestations are usually really close to the public water access. So it's definitely people moving it around. It's not animals. And starry stonewort, as you saw when I break the cell wall, it falls apart. So animals digest it. It's not like they eat it and then poop it out and there's no seeds for them to pass through your gut and spread it that way either. So it's being spread far distances by humans. And we really need to stop spreading it. In 10 years, people are gonna be going, why didn't we stop the spread of this stuff? Because it's terrible. We do a copper sulfate treatment um, just around the dock area and out through the canal that you can see out there. So that way we're trying to keep it from getting onto people's props when they come in and out. So that way they're not spreading it around either in the lake or when they leave. Um, so we actually do that and I do it before major holidays. Uh, right now the starry storm is growing in there. The deepest and thickest point that I saw was about this deep. So it's about 14 inches. A month ago, it was hardly anything. It was only three inches. So it grew that much in a month. And the other infestations in Beltrami County, we partnered with the DNR to get hand pulling done. So we did hand pulling around the public accesses for the other infestations with the DNR's help. Best thing to do when you get out of the lake is look over your boat for anything. Vegetation, doesn't matter what it is. If it's not supposed to be there, pull it off. If you're a day use boater, there's not a whole lot that you really have to do. The biggest thing you need to worry about is water being retained in your watercraft or in your trailer. And CD3 machines are really good at helping you get rid of those things. If you stay in the water for more than 24 hours or so over a couple days or over a weekend, then you really want to start looking really close and probably you need to get a watercraft decontamination from one of the free decon stations throughout the state. In a zebra mussel infested water body for over 24 hours, you have a good chance of having young zebra mussels attached to the watercraft. So you really need to feel the edge of the watercraft then to make sure that you don't have any of that. If you suspect that you do, definitely call one of the free decontamination stations and set up an appointment to go get it decon. They can flush out their live wells and bilges and stuff with even just regular tap water will be helpful. But if they can use hot water, that's even better. Or use one of the CD3 machines to suck out any water or blow out water lines. Our recommended dry time is five days. Uh, the reason for that is because um, if you don't find anything, what you're trying to prevent the spread of is the very young zebra mussels or villagers. And if you remove the water out of your watercraft, even on cool, humid days, the villagers and the very young zebra mussels will die. But if you find an adult zebra mussel, you got a different problem and you need to find a decon station. So I know I talked about how starry stonework dries out very fast, uh, but we're talking very small clumps, small pieces of starry stonework. If you have a huge clump of starry stonework, kind of like this, somewhere, what will happen is the outside will turn white and dry out. The inside will stay moist and it will keep that starry stonework alive and well. Uh, I went and looked at a dock at the beginning of a season once that had starry stonework, big huge clump of starry stonework on the bottom. I ripped it open and the starry stonework underneath was green, which made me think that it might be viable. You don't want clumps of starry stonework going anywhere. You want to make sure that you get rid of these clumps and get them off to the side and into the dry area to die. People need to be able to know what they need and bring it with them because they need to be responsible and about the transportation of invasive species. These are CD3 machines. Uh, they stand for clean, drain, dry, and dispose, three Ds. Uh, but there's a, the way they work is it's a solar power unit. There's no water in it. It's not a decontamination machine. It's just tools that people should be able to use to help them prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. 
Um, the things that I like about them is that they have the air hose that I don't really expect fishermen to carry an air hose with them to blow things out. And they also has a shop back, which I don't really expect people to carry shop backs around and try to figure in their generator. Uh, the thing that they also offer is a brush, uh, the um, plug wrench, and then a picker that those three tools are very easy for someone to get a hold of and carry with their boat, put them in their boat. So this is an example of what they should be carrying, especially if they can't get underneath their boat or they have problems with other things that people need to be able to know what they need and bring it with them because they need to be responsible and about the transportation of invasive species. So, but I am glad that it has the air hose and the shot back. A lot of people are using them. Uh, we reviewed some of the numbers the other day. We got 173 uses on the on this machine on the uh, shop back. So people are using it. Uh, it's very good. Uh, you can go to the website and look up on directions on how to use it too. So they have videos of things and suggestions on how to use everything. Uh, but what I usually tell is to people to use the shop back to suck up any excess water in their live wells and stuff. Or if they want to get rid of their minnows, they can suck it up through there and put it into the tank and it doesn't smell because it's all sealed. So, um, and then also the air hose, you can use this air hose to blow out any water lines. So you're not transporting water from one water body to the other. So this is a good thing to do that with. Uh, the other thing it has is lights. So if you come in at night, you just hit the button, you got lights down below to be able to look underneath your boat. And you also have some up top to go down. That way you got your boat all lit up so you have a better chance of catching stuff in the middle of the night. So, and then if you don't want to just, they will turn off after, I think it's three minutes. But uh, if you want to shut it off, you just hit the off button and that will shut off everything. So shut off the air hose and the lights. So it's a nice little unit. Um, they were, it's part of the Stop Starry campaign put on by the Minnesota Lakes and Rivers Association. Uh, they gave them to us in a grant so that we will have them at Starry Stonework locations.